In today's video, we're gonna talk about the differences between 30 amp shore power and 50 amp shore power for RVs. And I think the easiest way to get into this discussion is to talk about the different plugs and outlets that you're gonna find on 30 and 50 amp OEM RVs. So 30 amp RVs are going to have a plug that on their shore power cords, that looks like this. So you've got a hot, a neutral, and a ground. A 50 amp RV is going to have a plug that looks similar to this with hot leg one, hot leg two, a neutral, and a ground. And let's start with 30 amp RVs because they're kind of the most similar to what you're going to find in any standard household appliance. You know, in a standard household plug, you've got the same thing, hot, neutral, and ground. And on 30 amp, you've got hot, neutral, and ground. So it's really the same concept, just it's thicker wire. The contactors are just a little bit thicker so they can just carry more amps. You know, a plug like this is only gonna be able to carry 15 amps and a plug like this is gonna be able to carry 30 amps. So on a 30 amp RV, you're gonna have wiring that goes into the breaker box that looks similar to this. You're gonna have your hot wire going to your breaker that's gonna feed all the rest of the breakers in the breaker box. And then your neutral and grounds are going to go to their respective neutral and ground bus bars inside of the breaker box. On a 50 amp RV, typically you're going to have hot leg number one, going to one bus bar feeding all the hot leg one circuits in the breaker box and hot leg two is going to go to another bus bar that's going to be feeding all the hot leg number two circuits on that bus bar. The neutrals and grounds are also going to go to their own respective neutral and ground bus bars. So what does that mean for power capacities? Well 30 amp RVs are pretty simple it's just 30 amps and that's pretty much it. You can feed 30 amps worth of power across your breaker box regardless of how many circuits you have. You know, the combined total of power that you can draw from however many breakers are in the breaker box can't exceed 30 amps. Otherwise, the 30 amp breaker inside of the shore power pedestal is going to trip. Now, a 50 amp is a little confusing uh, in this regard because you've got two hot legs that are being fed in split phase and you've got 50 amps on hot leg one and 50 amps on hot leg two, which actually means that you've got 100 amps at 240 volts coming through this wire that's feeding your breaker box. So realistically, you've got 50 amps on one side of the breaker box and 50 amps on the other side of the breaker box. So we typically see 50 amp shore power in RVs that are going to have multiple big loads like you know, two or more air conditioners because you could potentially put, you know, two air conditioners on hot leg one and two air conditioners on hot leg two and probably not trip the shore power pedestal. So 50 amp shore power is a lot of power. Now, the other kind of confusing part about 50 amp shore power is what happens when you go to a campground that doesn't have a 50 amp uh, plug uh, available in the shore power pedestal. Well, you can use a 50 amp to 30 amp adapter, which I don't have one here, so we'll pop one up, looks like that. And that's gonna allow you to plug your 50 amp shore power plug into a 30 amp outlet that looks like that. And that's going to bridge L1 and L2. And so it's going to be feeding 30 amps of power in phase to both of these. And so it's going to feed power all the way through to the breaker box at only 30 amps. So you're gonna have 30 amps total available that's gonna be shared between your L1 side and L2 side of your breaker box. That means that if you have a RV that has 50 amp shore power and you're connected to one of those, you know, 50 amp to 30 amp adapters going into a 30 amp outlet on a shore power pedestal, you might not be able to run all of your air conditioners at the same time uh, before you start tripping that breaker that's inside of the shore power pedestal that's only able to flow a max of 30 amps. And realistically, that's just a system limitation and you're not going to be able to, you know, overcome that with more equipment. I mean, you could 
start using the multi plus power assist feature and add some power to shore power. But ultimately, if you need 50 amp shore power to run four air conditioners or whatever, you're just going to have to choose campgrounds that have 50 amp shore power available or use an onboard generator that has that much power delivery capacity. And the last thing I want to talk about, since I just mentioned inverters, is inverter choices when you're when you have a 50 amp OEM RV versus a 30 amp OEM RV. So if you have a 30 amp OEM RV, most of the inverter chargers on the market are going to work with it because they just have three inputs on the AC side: hot, neutral, and ground. So most of the Victron MultiPlus units available to the North American market are going to work with this, with the exception of the Victron MultiPlus 2X120, which is going to be perfect for 50 amp RVs because it has four AC input terminals, hot leg number one, hot leg number two, neutral, and ground. And so that's gonna let you use an inverter charger in your RV with 50 amp shore power because of those four terminals. Now, I hope this clears up uh, some of the confusions with 50 amp and 30 amp OEM RVs and how you would kind of integrate a inverter into them and what your actual power delivery capacity is with each one. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.